or mark unprecedented at times in Hartlepool, in, in the UK, across the world really. I mean, can you talk us through it from, from your point of view, from the club perspective over the last four, five, six days? Yeah, it's been an incredible few days, I think, for everybody. And I think um, things have developed so quickly since last Thursday, Friday, when we were all quite comfortable after the EFL and the Premier League making announcements Thursday afternoon that football was going to continue on, on the back of government advice. And it changed very quickly over Thursday night with, with a couple of high-profile cases. And then all hell let loose, really. Um, and it's been downhill since then, essentially. But um, what, what we have to do is, first of all, put the welfare of everybody first, send our best wishes out to all of our, our loyal fans and those who've helped us so much this, this season, but, but make plans within the knowledge that we've got. And so it's been a few days of lots of conversations between myself and the chairman on Friday. And again on Sunday, myself and Dave all day Sunday, the medical team, and, and just trying to keep staff um, and players informed as to what, what the plans are, but reacting to each development as it comes through. So trying to be strategic with kind of best guesses as much as anything else. I suppose the nature of a football club and the operation is that you're juggling quite a few balls because people turn up on a Saturday or a Tuesday and see the football, but they don't often see the, the mechanisms and all the different things that go behind, go on behind the scenes to, to bring that match day together. No, exactly, and I think we'll, you'll know as well as I do, we're working weeks and months ahead, really, with, with everything that we're doing. So we're talking about contracts for next year, we're talking to players for next year. Obviously, we announced Gav's renewal last week and we've been talking to others, so it's about those plans um, as well as the season ticket campaigns commercially etc um, and, and match days themselves so there's lots of planning goes in um, and now it's trying to sort of second guess what might happen in, in regards to those plans going forward. Lots of talk of obviously about how this kind of situation could impact, nobody knows I suppose how it's going to develop but how it could impact lower league clubs and specifically those in the National League and below as well. Is there any reason for Hartlepool fans to be nervous? We've had so many reasons to be anxious in the last few years what can you tell us about the you know the, the road to, to, to come in, in, the, in the next few weeks I had a long conversation with the chairman on on Friday afternoon and spoke to him again about potential plans for the next few weeks on on Sunday and I think we're we're blessed with with a chairman who's already put a significant amount of his own money into this to clear up some of the mess and, and help us move forward competitively um, and he's Happy, I want to say, happy to continue supporting us through what will be a challenging time in terms of cash flow over the next few weeks. We would fully hope and anticipate that the season will finish at some point. So this is a cash flow challenge rather than a, something which affects the, the the balance sheet, as it were. But um, equally, you know, he's still having to put the money in, and it's only because we've got a chairman who's prepared to back it, which we should be grateful for, that, that we we can sit here quite comfortably and say that this, whilst it be a challenge, it's not catastrophic. There are certainly clubs out there that the challenge will be catastrophic for and we obviously think of them because it's not long since the club was in, in that kind of position. Um, but it's really serious um, and lots of the conversations that are going on with with the National League, um, who I know are speaking to the FA and the government, are, are finding ways of essentially trying to smooth out that cash flow um, in the short term for clubs to make sure that clubs don't go to the wall because that's a real possibility. On the football side of things, obviously the lads were, were out there training this morning and yesterday on on the Vic, what's the what's the plan with them moving forward now as well? So we're we're gonna we've got a plan in place which we fully expect at some stage there to be some sort of lockdown as it were, which might prevent them training. And Dave's opinion was to keep as much fitness in the legs as long as possible in advance of that. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a shorter week this week. Um, brought them back to the Vic in order to have a more have more control over the environment so we can make sure it's sanitised, that we're in complete control, we're not coming into contact with a wider audience as it were. So that's the reason for training here. But there are programmes which the lads will be sent away with this weekend which to keep their fitness levels up. And I think what we're trying to advocate with the, the National League um, is to, rather than keep making decisions on a kind of two-weekly basis, is to understand if it's going to be a longer stint without football, let's plan it, let's understand it and almost treat it like a closed season so that we can plan accordingly. Because kind of the worst thing that we could do is limp through two weeks and then renew it for two weeks and, and then the same again. Essentially to have the understanding of what might happen over a longer term will help us plan certainly with the fitness of, of the players because if, if there's a lockdown, for example, for two or three weeks, the, the time that it would take to get them back up to the necessary levels would then be 
three to six weeks after that. So it's it's quite tough. So we need to plan accordingly. Um, and and I think this initial two week suspension will be more about um, the FL, the Premier League, the National League, the FA getting together to put some proper plans in place for a more sustained period. I think that's my gut feeling. I guess there's going to be an appetite, isn't there, from every club to, to finish this season somehow. I know you said it with the press earlier, there'll be a, a hunger for a, a resolution. And I know you said, I think it's been confirmed now that Euro 2020 will take place next summer. So that yeah. gives just a bit of a greater window, doesn't it, hopefully, for this season to come to some form of conclusion at some point. Yeah, and I think obviously I've got to be cautious in, in terms of my projection of what might happen because I'm guessing like yeah. everybody else. But best guess from mine, I, I think I sent an email to, to all of the staff on, on Sunday. And my best guess was that Euro 2020 would be cancelled. It has been that on Thursday, potentially the Premier League might look at announcing something within a few days of extending the season potentially into to maybe May, June time. Um, and, and then have a shorter kind of closed season, pre-season to get next season underway. And, and that would seem to make sense because... I know the financial impact, whilst public health comes first, the financial impact, if you look at the difference of, of £100 million between the Championship and the Premier League, and even if you come down to look at Barrow sitting at the top of our table with the chance of going up and there's a million pounds difference between the two divisions, they can have something to say if, if there's a cancellation of, the, of the, the season and you can understand that being the case. So it, it seems to protect the integrity of it that getting this season finished, even if it's in a kind of compressed four weeks, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday for the seven games we've got left, it would make some sense. But uh, that's only a little of me and my ideas, but it would seem to make some sense going forward. And, and for the fans, I mean, obviously, I've just put a picture on Twitter earlier on of the practice match that's going on there. They wanted a live stream and the one highlights, the one post match, <laughs> because that's what it's going to get like, isn't it? It's only been a few days without football and yeah. that's the mentality of a football supporter. You just crave something to, to watch to get your teeth into yeah well the challenge on you is to find something more creative <laughs> than Connect Four which I know you're a conscientious <laughs> objector to so but yeah no I mean we the challenge is to provide contact to remind the fans that we're here but also reward them with some content and with some interesting stuff over the next few weeks to keep them in contact with us because they've been unbelievable and we need to be unbelievable back to them over the next few weeks and I hope on a, on a perhaps a more serious note that that in due course, you would think that maybe the government will start to look that actually people need entertainment and, and so football will pay, play a really important part when we get over the, the hump, as it were, in terms of the, the virus, that football coming back as quickly as possible will be important to get people entertained and out there and, um, and, and obviously... In the meantime, people's health comes first. That's one of the key messages at this right, right at this present time, isn't it? That you know, whatever the, the rights and wrongs of what's gone on, or how important we all view football, the, the main priority at the moment is that everyone's well, that we look after each other's health. No, I think so. And, and football can be, if we're honest, football can be quite a self-centred environment. Um, we need to understand when people are asking us questions about the financial impact on Hartlepool United cancelling football matches that there's the people that we employ on a match day who rely on that income there's the people who supply us with pies with beer the pubs that rely on people on the fans going in, in um, before the match and, and so on and so forth so we think of them but but even more important than that is people's health and, and we care deeply about our community we care deeply about the people of Hartlepool and our supporters and, and our staff and players and so they have to be the priority at this time and it's about everybody out there keeping well keeping their families safe and well and then coming back stronger and, and that kind of never say die attitude will come through once again and how are you going to fill your Saturdays? God, I'm going to be listening to you with whatever you decide to create <laughs> oh, the pressure's on pressure, you yeah. <laughs>